All right, so what we're gonna do here is a little bit of practice calculating from a frequency table. So a frequency table is just a way to quickly summarize data. So if we have a set of scores like we do over here, you'll note that just having numbers written randomly on the board doesn't really help us understand that data very much. A frequency table is a basic way to be able to see what kinds of elements might be common in your data, and you can also do some calculations from it rather quickly. In general, a frequency table will always have at least two elements, and you'll have a column for x and a column for f, and sometimes you'll also see f of x, which would then include this symbol, uh, and basically that just means the frequency of x. Your book usually resorts simply to x and f for frequency. So in these columns, your book often goes in descending order, which means it starts with the biggest number of x and it would put it at the top. Now, going in descending order isn't required. I often actually go in ascending order with the smallest number of x first. It really doesn't make any difference, but it will change, for example, how your cumulative frequencies look. So if, for example, we look at our data and we start with the largest value of x, we would see that nine is our greatest value of x. Now, if we know that it's possible to take all the values that are in this space, we could include, for example, all those numbers down to one. If we don't need all the numbers, we could just use the numbers that are present. So those are the values that x can take. So these were all of our scores for x but they were unorganized. Now we have all the scores X can take, and next to it, we're gonna put how often that score is taken in our data. So we say, well, how many nines are there? I see one. How many eights? Hmm, zero. Sevens, one, two. Sixes, one. Fives, one. Fours, one, threes, one, two, three, twos, two, and one, one. And so that now is a frequency table that represents the scores of X and how often those scores are taken. So we could use this to make calculations and to get some other quick statistics for our data set. So your book goes through a few different examples of things we can do. Um, for example, how to get the sum, how to quickly get an average, how to get uh, the sample size. So the sample size is simply the sum of F. So the sum of F equals N, which is the sample size. And this is simply how many observations I have in my data. So here, I would just add up all of my values in F. One, three, four, five, six, nine, 11, 12. So here, the sum of F, the frequencies, is the sample size, which is 12. I have 12 scores that I have obtained here, right? Now, I can do other things with this as well. I can get for example, the sum of all of the scores of X. Well, how might I do that quickly? One of the quickest ways is to make a new column that is X times F, or a lot of times written as FX, not F of X, so no parentheses. Your book often does this, and all that's trying to tell you is that we're gonna multiply these two columns. So nine times one is nine, zero, 14, six, five, four, nine, four, one. And so all I've done there is multiplied across. And what this is doing is quickly giving me a way to get the value of X's, right? Multiplication is basically a fast way to add. So by multiplying, I'm quickly getting the total for each of the values of X. So all of the X scores that take the value of nine sum to nine. Right, But if I were to add the two sevens, seven plus seven is 14. So multiplying across the score by the frequency it takes is just a faster way to get that. Once I've done that, I can simply add together all of these f of x scores, and what is that gonna give me? 
Well, if I add, if I get the sum of f of x, that is the sum of x, right? And that might seem a little confusing, but if we think about in raw data, the sum of x would mean add together all the x scores. So I would have taken 7 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 1 plus 3 plus 7 plus 2 plus 4 plus 9. And that, all that together, is what we would call the sum of x. We've added together all the scores of x. But in this case, because we're in a frequency table, to get to the sum of x, we cannot simply add the x column. Because the x column is not the data. It's the possible value that x could take. So for example, we don't just have one seven. We have two sevens. But we have to have both pieces of information to know that. So to get the sum of x, as we would normally consider it, we have to do the sum of fx from our table. So we can quickly get this value by summing this column. So 9 plus 14 is 23, plus 6, 29, 34, 38, 47, plus 5 gets us 52. Now that is the sum of x. We could check that by adding together these. So 7 plus 3 is 10, is 15, plus down here we've got 5, 11, 26, plus over here we've got another 11, 37, plus over here we've got 11, 15, 52. So we see here that adding together all the x, the sum of x is 52, and doing that from a frequency table allows us to quickly get the sum, and we could then use that to also get the mean. So we could get the mean by simply remembering what was the sum of f, the frequency n, we had 12. So a mean is a sum over a count, right? A sum over a count will get us a mean. And in fact, the sample mean is the sum of x over n. So if we're doing the sum of x over n, all we have to do from our frequency table is take the two sums that we have. Because the sum of x is the same thing as the sum of f of x, right, from our table. And n is the same thing as the sum of f. So if we take 52 and we divide it by 12, that gets us our mean for the table, which is going to be 4 and 4 left over. 4.3 is the average. So these are some quick ways we can do some calculations from a frequency table. We'll come back and do a few more examples, hopefully to help you with your calculations and your frequency table construction.